This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar on color correction and grading in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to improve your images by adjusting grayscale values. This is the basket to a hot air balloon. It's not a bad shot, it just feels washed out. And because I'm going to be concentrating on grayscale, let's shift my scopes so I just see what this grayscale image looks like. I've got a hot spot right here. That's the paper that's starting to blow out right at 100%. Notice that my black levels don't go below 13%. Now, you wouldn't think a 13% difference in, in um, shadow values would make a difference, but it makes a huge difference. Two or three percent can make a huge difference. And overall, this has sort of a hot, washed out look be nice to make it a little bit more evening, a little bit richer, a little bit more romantic. Well, the very first thing that we do is to select the clip. That's always the first choice, select the clip. And there's this new icon up here in the inspector. That's the color icon. We can add color corrections, which are, hang on, the color board that we've used since the beginning of Final Cut, or color wheels, which are my absolute favorite, or color curves, which are the same as in Photoshop, and hue saturation curves, which allow us to create effects. I'm going to show you the color curves briefly, but I, I, don't, I don't use them. I'm not comfortable with them. I try to avoid them even in Photoshop. The curves are fine. It's not a software problem. It's an operator problem. I just don't like them. So I'm going to go back to the video inspector. Notice that because I selected the curves, it applied the effect. I'm going to highlight the effect, hit the delete key to make it disappear, and go back to the color correction inspector and add color wheels. There's two ways that we can look at the wheels. One is to do a single wheel, and I can switch between the master adjusting shadows, midtones, or highlights. This works great if you're on a smaller monitor, but I'm on a 27-inch iMac. I'm going to set this to all wheels. Here I have a master control for the entire image, or just highlight control, just midtone control, and just shadow control. There's three controls on each wheel. This adjusts exposure. Darker is down, lighter is up. This adjusts saturation. Darker is less saturated, up is more saturated. And this adjusts color. Because I'm not doing any color adjustments, we're just doing grayscale adjustments, let's do some quick tweaks and show you what happens. First, notice that my black levels are high. So I'm going to go to the shadows, grab this exposure level, and drag my black levels down so they get closer to zero. I don't want to lose the detail in here, so I don't want to crush them. That would be bad, because now I can't see what's inside the basket. But I also don't want to make them so washed out that the shot has no pleasing value to it at all. So I'm going to pull this down right about in there. At this point, I always, always adjust shadows first. Then I adjust highlights. I want to have my highlights come up a bit, but I don't want to necessarily have them go all the way to the top. It's not that that bright a day. So I'll pull them up. Also, there's very little that's pure white. The green is not white. The fans are not white. So there's nothing to really take to 100% because there's nothing pure white in a shot. This is blown out. And so that's higher than the rest. But I still wouldn't take it to 100%. Shadows give me richness. So we've made this picture richer. Highlights give me energy. And the midtones allow me to adjust the time of day. Notice how the sun is closer to, to noon. Now the sun is setting and it's much closer to evening. So we'll just pull that down a bit to give ourselves a little bit more of a end of the, the late afternoon kind of feel. This is before and this is after. Before and after. Here's another example. Notice that blue balloon is right at 4%. 4% is not black. If I were to select this balloon and pull the, well, I'll just do it here on the color board, pull the black levels down, I've just made that balloon black. But it isn't black, it's blue. You don't want to do that. You want to, to make sure that you retain the color value of that balloon. Where we're really dark, though, is we're dark in the highlights. Notice the highlights end about 62%. Now, there is a specular. See that dot right there reflecting the sun? That's the spike that you may be able to see coming off the balloon right there. If I don't care about the spike, I'll raise this up a lot, and then, whoops, it's too much. It's over 
I'll raise this up so it goes close to 100% and then clamp with the broadcast safe filter, that spike. The broadcast safe filter clamps white levels so nothing goes over 100%. For instance, let me just show you quickly. Oops, I don't want to raise this. I want to raise this. Okay. To get to the broadcast safe filter, it's stored inside color. And there's broadcast safe. You just drop it on and it's done. Notice how it's clamped the, t the brightest parts of the balloon. I'm going to turn this off so you can see it. See how I now have detail in the balloon, but my white levels are at 110%. Here I clamp it. I've lost the texture. I've lost the detail, but it's also made sure that both the specular and the balloon do not go over 100%. That's the broadcast safe filter. It's clamping, locking on video values and present it, preventing them from going over 100% or going below zero. Or here's another shot. Again, not bad, but we can make it a little bit better. If I go up to the color wheels, and we'll pull our white levels down just a little bit. Good. Pull our black levels down. Pull our mids down. And notice how we're giving us much more of a a late afternoon feeling because the majority of our announcements are in the midtones. Look at that. Here it is before. Not bad. And there it is after. Better. That's after and that's before. Another example. He doesn't have any black level. He's about 8 10% up. White levels stop around 85%, but there's nothing white in the frame. You would never pull the video levels all the way up to 100% for this clip because there's nothing white. Skin tone is not white. Skin tone is actually a gray. So I wouldn't take the highlights up to here. All that does is it gives him a white spot. It's just there's nothing white there, so the, therefore there's nothing grayscale white. So there, therefore you don't pull the white levels to 100% because skin tone is a gray value. I'll pull this down right about there. Add a little bit of mid-tone adjustment. Pull that back up a bit. And there we go. This is before. This is after. Before, which isn't bad, but after is better. What we're doing is we are adjusting just the grayscale values. That's always the thing you adjust first to make sure that our image exposure is where we want it to be. One more example, and then uh, I'll move on. Sometimes we want to do it for dramatic effect. Here I have a winter scene. Select the clip, and I'll do it on the color board just because it's fast. I want to have this be a really cold winter scene. I'm going to pull the black level down. I'm going to push the white level up. And I really want to compress, pull those blacks way down. I don't want to have anything except black and white. I want to have it feel very cold, very, very, there's no gray in the middle here. I want it to be harsh. Okay, this is before, soft, foggy, mm, spring, winter day, maybe. And look at that. Oh, I want an extra parka before I go outside. Look at how by adjusting the midtones, that's this button right here, how we're affecting the emotion of the scene. I'm crushing the black, not crushing it, but I'm putting the black right at, at zero. I'm putting the highlights right at 100. I'm really stretching the exposure. But the reason I'm getting that stark, dramatic, cold feeling is because I'm messing with the midtones. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on color correction and grading in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 261. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and 
time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than nineteen hundred movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.